so, so I have a near question because I think I'm the rookie here. Yeah. So because just now you were talking about demand, right? You're talking yeah. about demand of watches, which um, actually causes the price of watches to increase. So if I can share this article, this article actually shows that, uh, yeah, can you guys see the article? Yep. Yep. Yeah. So this article actually shows that Apple Watch outsold the entire Swiss watch industry in 2019. And if you look at this article, uh, I think this is one of it. Uh, this is another article on Forbes. That was CNBC and this is Forbes. It's saying that Apple is killing the Swiss watch industry. And one of the things I observe is, and, and you can see in this article, you can see the commentators, uh, people like from LVMH and all. Okay. So my question is, we are also starting to see um, the guys who can afford it are moving to iWatch. Okay. Why do you think the price of luxury watch is still increasing? Okay, this is a very interesting question. Let me pull out a data. Let me put a slide. Let me see whether this is okay. Nice. Yeah. So for all of you guys watching this, right, I just want to let you know, Mike, Dr. Mike has not been given any questions, right? So this is something to pull out. <laughs> Yeah. So okay. if you guys are right now, yeah, go ahead and share it. Come um add message someone or comment, right? Text your friends because this is something that I hope you guys are learning something here. Yeah. Mm. Ah, right. Okay, can you guys see these slides? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's let's come back to this. Okay, the watch industry has a, has been around for more than 100 years. Trust me, I mean, that the, those brands that survive until today, they are 100 years, they are 150 years, they are 120 years. So the, the first crisis where, actually this is the this is a question that a lot of my, my members ask us, and says, hey, uh, uh, Mike, if today I buy a 170,000 Rolex Daytona, will this watch still be relevant 10 years down the road? Because 170,000 is not a small amount of money. Uh, back in those days, uh, John, uh, John and uh, Tesla 170, you can buy a studio, but now you can just get a Daytona, right? So I just hope a lot of my members, look, the watch industry has gone through a lot of revolutions, right? Do you still remember uh, we so-called the uh, quartz, quartz crisis during the Se Seiko's days, so-called so the battery watches crisis? So the watch itself has actually survived through the biggest crisis, which is the battery watch, which is quartz crisis during those days. So those days, there are also news from Japan telling that the quartz is going to replace mechanical watches because... Uh, the, the maintenance is easier. The most important thing is the time itself is much more accurate. But look at it today. Where are the quartz watches and where are the mechanical watches? I can tell you that eventually these two watches will stay on together. So it's like, for example, today, when people ask me about, are you worried about the iPhone or the smartwatch will overtake or will take over the whole suite or the mechanical watches or the quartz watch industry? My answer is no. It will still coexist together. So you in future you will have a I will have friends at this point of time. Actually, he wore two watches. So we'll have one smart watch on his right hand, and he'll actually wear a mechanical watches on his left hand. Mm -hmm. So this, this is something that it would definitely uh coexist both watches. And you look at the data that I will show over here. So you can look at there is a drop uh of uh, uh this uh Swiss watch demand in 20. 16 because that is the time when apple actually launched the first iwatch itself yes my answer is yes that year itself actually it was a very bad year for the whole mechanical swiss market yeah, actually the, the whole sales itself dropped but you look at from 207 onwards right you look at the orange color watch itself it is growing and it's still growing until now but the blue color watches itself actually is dropping why because if you want to classify a watch as a basic luxury watch itself, the price has to be above 3,000 Swiss francs. So meaning, after 2016, the more expensive watches actually is performing better compared to those Swiss watches which are relatively cheaper. So you can see that nowadays, uh, um, um, during our parents' era, uh, Desmond and, 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 and this are John, you might heard about the brands that call Rado. Rado is a Swiss watch. But actually, when it hits our era right now, how many of us still will use a Rado watch? 
don't get me wrong, it's a good watch. But again, whether are they relatively, uh, are they competitive enough to compare with the rest of the brands itself? My answer is, you, you get my answer. You will know the answer. How many of your friends surrounding you actually wore a rather watch, mechanical watch, right? But for those brands like Rolex, like for those brands like uh, AP, uh, for those good brands uh, for continuously grow, growing one, when their price itself is, they price it correctly as their luxury watch, it is very different because the demand for a luxury watch will be always there and a smart watch, the functionality and the design will always be very different compared to the luxury watch. Yeah, so to me, it's, I'm not too worried. I think that eventually these two things will still uh, coexist together for very, very long. Yeah, well, so my, yes, thought, my thought to this is yeah. that in terms of Apple Watches, right? I think they are fantastic. I think, you know, mm. Swiss Watch can never beat Apple Watch in terms of utility and functionality. Correct. Uh, but I think the difference is that they play very different roles. I think when you, it, it, I mean, a lot of people think Swiss Watches is tell time. I'm running a watch right now, but my time is uh, five o'clock. <laughs> and it's definitely not five o'clock right now. So my point is that Swiss Watches are being kept as a, a store of value, number one. And also it's being, it's like a car, like in a previous episode of our podcast, we talked about John buying a two-door car, right? It was a very interesting story uh, in order to impress people. And I think watches do the same thing as well. If you look at the watches that hold value or tend to do very well uh, in terms of ROI, they tend, from far, you tend to know what that watch is. If you notice, like from Royal Oak, for example, from far, you can see the band, you can see the bracelet, you know exactly what that is. You see a right. Nautilus from like, 20 meters away, you know exactly what that is, right? So Mariner, 20 meters away, you know exactly what that is, right? So I think that's the big difference that it's a, it's a symbol of like, I feel like status and also it's a store of value as well. And the fact that, you know, earlier you, you, you mentioned that men only have a watch as the main jewelry. So most yeah. men will spend most of their hard earned savings and money to buy a jewelry that they can actually wear, which is a Swiss watch. And the thing is the fact that with uh, Apple watches, well, the difference is right now I'm seeing something really interesting. Though. People are putting the NFTs that they are buying. I'm not sure Dr. Adato Michael, you know about NFTs. Yeah, NFT. They are buying yeah. NFTs and then they're putting the NFT image on the wallpaper of their Apple Watch. And then they are like showing off to people, look at this, I paid 20 grand for these <laughs> NFTs on their watch. I thought it was interesting. That might be the new flex in the future. I don't know, right? Uh, but yeah, uh, John, you had a question. I sorry to cut you off earlier. Yeah. So you're seeing just one thing to clarify, right? So what you're seeing is the higher end watches, yeah, um, they they still do well, right? They so the mid well. range, right? The mid range, the lower range, um, they are affected by iWatch. But yeah. you also showed in your graph that there are only that few brands that kind of do well as an investment watch, investment grade yes. watch, right? Right. So my my, I would love to know like why is it that in the high end market or even in the ultra high end market, why is it that only that few brands do better as an investment grade watch? Okay, um, let's look at, I don't think, okay, let's don't go back to the slides. Let's just have a chat, right? So I, I think what yeah. Desmond brought up a very good point just now is, is actually about recognition. So which means that if you are wearing a, a Royal Oak, you are wearing a Nautilus, um, seriously, or you now you're wearing a Richard Mill, you can see what watch that person is actually wearing from very, very far away. And actually, um, you will also get to understand a bit more about that person's character through the watch that he wears. Like, for example, from our experience, uh, we, we roughly know that what type of buyers will actually buy a Richard Mill. We roughly know what type of buyers will actually go for a Royal Oak or going for a Rolex or going for a Pater Philippe, right? So it's, it's, it's recognition itself. And second thing, um, I'm sad to say that, uh, or I can say that proud to say that, uh, those four brands that we mentioned, you look at Richard Mille itself, they actually control very much of their production. So you can see that almost every single piece of Richard Mille is actually a limited edition. So it runs on very, very limited productions. And uh, look at Rolex. Rolex knows that everybody is going after their hot models like the Daytonas, the Pepsi, the Batman, the Batgirls. Uh, um, why they are not producing so-called more of these models to meet the market demand and why there are still a shortage of these watches in the market. It's, it's because they control the quality itself and also they control uh, the, the, the volume itself that is going into the market. So there are other 
brands, which I do not want to name them, is when you wanted to buy that brand itself, you can anytime walk into any of their boutiques, you will see stocks available, you can even get a good discount, right? So that, these, that, that doesn't give you um, that, that good feeling of, uh, wow, I can get something that any else can't get. And also at the same point of time, you will not get that type of recognition when you wear the watch. Uh, and, and those are the things that actually uh, drives the market, the demand, and people are willing to pay is because of they feel that I can get something that others don't. And that also actually guarantees the basic uh, so-called value of that watch itself. So, so if you ask me whether whether other brands, if they want to follow uh, Rolex to, to do this, will their sales itself go up my answer to you is not because in the watch industry in the watch game itself uh, i tell you branding is more than 100 percent john branding is so important in watch industry the the heritage behind the brand how they associate the brand with the ambassadors and then where do they advertise the brand itself they really really put in a lot of effort not only money to make sure that the brand attract the right buyers and when the brand itself carries a lot more value than the actual watch itself this is where actually the price will go crazy <laughs>